Antarctica. The mythical white continent. A daunting landscape seemingly out of this world. It's the closest thing to being in another planet. Where breathtaking wildlife is now struggling with a new threat. Climate change. I'm back off the bow. Tonight, journey to the legendary place once thought out of man's reach. Wow. Now struggling to cope with a human-altered climate. The scientists in a race against time to protect the seas. We have 12 years to really fight the impacts of climate change, and we have to act now. The shocking contaminants they're discovering inside the whales. Things like pesticides, even microplastics. And what the wildlife at the edge of the world can tell us about all of our futures. Just getting to Antarctica takes time and patience. We arrive in Ushuaia, Argentina. The sleepy port town nestled at the foot of the southern Andes, and it's from here we set sail. We made it down to Ushuaia. They call this the town at the end of the world, but we are going further south. Hello. We've been invited aboard the RCGS Resolute by One Ocean Expeditions and the World Wildlife Fund to travel to Antarctica, ground zero for climate change. After two days crossing the Drake Passage, we navigate into the waters of the Antarctic Peninsula. Good morning, it's Sunday morning. Welcome to Antarctica. But this frigid landscape can be deceptive. It's bearing the brunt of the effects of climate change. Across the Antarctic Peninsula, the ice season has shortened by more than three months over the last 40 years, and 87% of the glaciers here are receding. This expedition allows tourists to come face to face with the realities of climate change, seeing science in action. Let's get away from the ship. We link up with nature enthusiast Monica Parker. Happy. She's travelled to Antarctica to celebrate her 40th birthday. So it's zero degrees out here. It's zero degrees in there. Uh, go for all of it. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm a little nervous. I want to stay in the boat. Oh. oh yeah, we all want to stay in the boat, Monica. <laughs> Antarctica is a land of extreme and unpredictable weather. As we near the shore, it begins to snow. There we go. We've made it. We've landed on Antarctica. This is awesome. It's cold, but it's awesome. I kind of wish it wasn't snowing. Yeah. For now, maybe best to leave the elements to the seals and marine biologists across the bay. Just go past it and then turn. Yeah. Ari Friedlander and a team of researchers are scanning the horizon, searching for whales. Today we're going to look for mostly humpback whales, maybe minke whales. We want to be able to biopsy and fly our drone over them to look at body condition and size. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, right there. It's yeah, up now. These marine biologists have come from all over the United States to Antarctica to study the pressures facing the humpback and minke whale population. The biopsy samples are taken using a crossbow. This is the tip that'll collect the skin and the blubber sample from the whale. It'll penetrate in about an inch or so, inch and a half into the animal and get some skin and blubber. We've been sampling since late November. Getting the body condition and sex ratio of animals that are around here now is is really important. It's summer in the Antarctic, prime feeding season for humpback whales who spend months loading up on krill before heading back to the tropics to mate and give birth. The arrow makes contact, the researchers assuring us that it doesn't hurt the gigantic mammal. Surrounded by whales, the researchers collect a few more samples. Yeah. Southwest is the direction that we want to be basically going. And after spending several hours in the biting cold, they head back to the ship. Great job, team. Way to hit it, hit it hard with the elements, too. But their day is not over yet. We're going to go into the lab. We can process the samples. And so this first sample we took for a pollutants analysis. So this sample can't go in one of the plastic sterile baggies because one of the things we're looking for is plastic contaminants. These samples revealing plastics 
Heavy metals and even flame retardants have made their way into whales' bodies, the tendrils of man stretching even here to the seemingly pristine and remote waters of Antarctica. This little subsample is about all you need for both the molecular and the hormone work. So that's a really good sample. You can see the distinct layers between the skin and the blubber itself. Now they go in the freezer and get carried back to California. And their research is already yielding results. A recent report by the WWF highlights that whales of the Antarctic are facing increased pressures due to commercial krill fisheries and to climate change. We're really racing against the clock in a lot of ways to generate a baseline for how these animals behave. And these animals are already compromised in a big way and this ecosystem's compromised in a big way. And so we need to be down here doing this right now. I suppose for a lot of people at home, they'll be thinking, whales are important, we love whales. They're beautiful to look at. It's important that they remain on this earth. But how does it affect me at home? They represent the health of an ocean ecosystem. To be able to have enough food to support a whale, let alone a population of whales, and as citizens of the planet, regardless of where you live, we have an obligation to let things be in a way that uh, is unencumbered by our activities. But a landmark report released by the UN revealed that humans are already altering the world at an unprecedented pace. Over one million plant and animal species are now at risk of extinction. Here in the peninsula, many penguin populations are already on the decline. The loss of sea ice is affecting their primary food source, krill. And through funding from the WWF, the researchers are now using the latest technologies available from satellite tags and drones to determine how the decline in krill is affecting the whale population. The next day, we get to see all of that technology in action. There we go. Let's do it. Got it. The team from Duke University's Marine Robotics Lab launches their state-of-the-art scientific drone. Hoping to study humpback whales from the air, the team takes us to Paradise Bay. And with the weather finally clearing up, this remote cove truly lives up to its name. Within minutes, trained eyes find what they're after. Humpback off the bow, about three quarters of a mile. There you can see the animal there, blowing. Just out over here, so at about one o'clock off the boat, you can see a little black, black line. Liver on the surface of the water. Mm -hmm. oh, I can't believe you saw that. With eyes in the sky, the researchers move in for a better look. Oh, there's pigs. They're super bendy, they're moving their tail around. It's like they're flirting or something. This one-of-a-kind technology, designed to withstand brutal Antarctic conditions, provides the team with invaluable insight into the lives of these mysterious creatures. In the pictures, we can actually measure them. So far, the numbers are encouraging. Unlike most whale species, humpback populations are on the rise. One of the primary things I'm really interested in is looking at the recovery of these animals from the industrial whaling era. Once hunted to near extinction, humpback populations have since rebounded thanks to a moratorium on commercial whaling, a rare bit of good news in this threatened region. For instance, 2014, 86% of our females were pregnant, which is incredibly high. So the humpback is doing really well at the moment, basically. Yeah, they're like going gangbusters as far as we can tell. The team sets up one of their most crucial research technologies, tagging the giants with a tracking device. Two possibles, but this guy in front of us closest looks good. Uh, copy that. Why is the tagging important? Well, the animals spend such little time at the surface that uh, just studying the animals and their surface behaviour only gives a tiny little insight into what the animals are physically doing for most of their lives. So uh, by putting the tags on, we can really kind of get more of an insight into what the animals are doing for the 98% of the time they're under the water. The tagging team inches closer to the giants. The idea is to get to the well before it wakes up and dives away. Super stealth. But the humpbacks are too elusive. Diving beneath the surface each time the tagging team gets just within range. You can see this is not easy work. We still haven't managed to tag any of these whales. 
approaching really slowly, really slowly, and then the last second, they dip down underwater. It just goes to show the painstaking work these scientists have to do. When we come back, time is running out. The scientists get one last chance to tag the whales and a close encounter at the end of the Earth. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.